St. John, the 11th chapter, beginning with the 18th verse, I wish to read. Now Bethany was nigh unto Jerusalem, about fifteen furlongs off. And many of the Jews came to Martha and Mary to comfort them concerning their brother. Then Martha, as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, went and met him, but Mary sat still in the house. Then said Martha unto Jesus, Lord, if thou had been here, my brother had not died. But I know that even now, whatsoever thou wilt ask God, God will give it thee. Jesus said unto her, Thy brother shall rise again. Martha said unto him, I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Leaveth thou this? She said unto him, Yea, Lord, I believe that thou art the Christ, the Son of God, which should come into the world. Watch that. Then when she had said so, she went her way and called Mary, her sister, secretly, saying, The Master is come and calleth for thee. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, confirm those words to our hearts tonight as we wait on thee now. Thy word, thy servant, and the text is all committed to you. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. You may be seated. My purpose of being here is to try to help the people of God, not in so much as to pray lay hands upon the sick, but that they might recognize Jesus Christ in our midst the Son of God, in our midst. We are speaking tonight on this subject that Jesus came and called. Now, on this time that we're speaking of, it was a very sad time. If you ever read the story in the life of our Lord, we find out that he was a great friend to this boy, Lazarus. He was, um, after the going away of Joseph, or he had left and come and lived with Martha, Mary, and Lazarus. And they were great friends. It, it, he was like a pastor to them, a, a real friend. They made him uh, little things to wear, a coat to wear, I believe he claimed, and, and his wool threw out without a seam. And then they had done things for him because they believed in him. It was, they, they believed and had seen that they left the church and so forth to follow him. That was a great thing in that day, which even the penalty of it could be death to, to go away from it. But Jesus, uh, uh, this fellow that was uh, going around, as they claimed, tearing up their churches and saying evil things about their priest and, and so forth, he had, he had done a great harm to him, they thought, and, and to even confessing would been to, uh, uh, to be put out of synagogues. And then if you're out from the church, they, they thought you had no, no chance for redemption. If you didn't belong to one of their sect like Pharisees, Sadducees, or something, there was no redemption if you was outside of that. And if they had to write the keys, and they could just keep you out if they wanted to. That was their own sin. No wonder Jesus said, you by your tradition has made the word of God of no effect. Amen. And that's repeated again. Because we all know history repeats itself ever so often. And it is sad to say it, but it was prophesied to repeat and it has done it again. We find that Jesus wasn't well thought of. Many times people uh, want to judge uh, uh, the man who doesn't agree with them. We're not to do that. We can disagree with one another, yet be friendly. If I couldn't disagree with the man and still love him and pray for him and disagree with him upon the basis of the Scripture and for better enlightenment, then I won't say nothing to him. I always want to disagree with him friendly because I love him and I, I certainly don't want him to be lost and he should do the same thing with me. We don't want to be lost. And we must base our thoughts upon what the Word says. Let the Word be true. Yes. Not our creed or what our thoughts, but what he says. No private interpretation, just what the Word says. The other night I did something that seemed sacrilegious almost. I believe it was at a ministerial breakfast of the morning. I put Jesus on a trial. I said, just as they did then, so do they do today. Maybe it'd be good if I repeat it just for a moment, if we have the time. Now, I said today, we find out 
that in Luther's Reformation, he uh, in the time of that, he said, the just shall live by faith. The man that believes, he, that's got it. But we found out many of them said they believed and didn't have it. In the days of, of John Wesley, if they got the second blessing, they call it sanctification, entire sanctification, they got happy and shouted. Everybody shouted, had it. But they found out they didn't have it. A lot of them shouted and didn't have it. The days of Pentecost, they said, now the restoration of the gifts has come, the baptism of the Spirit. He just speaks in tongues as God. We find out that many spoke in tongues and didn't have it. So uh, they say, well, the fruit of the Spirit, that's what it is. Oh, no, not the fruit of the Spirit. Christian science has that for hardly love. It's the fruit of the Spirit. And, and they have more love than anybody. And deny the deity of Jesus Christ. Just call him a prophet, just an ordinary man. See, so that doesn't do it. Let me just question that just a minute. Let's take Jesus on trial, and God forgive me for this statement from the platform, but I'm going to be against him for a minute just to bring you to life. See? Now, I've got you people here tonight. I'm talking to you. It's back in another day when Jesus of Nazareth was on earth. I come to you to, and to reason with you against this fellow, Jesus of Nazareth. Now, we all know that God is love. The Bible says he is. All right. And the love, the Spirit is long-suffering, long gentleness, patience, meekness, and so forth. Love. Now, I say, I want to ask you something. We are going to take what, what we do a Christian. Look at this old priest of yours. His great, great, great grandfather was a priest. He had to be born in that lineage of Levite to be a priest. We find out now he doesn't have a young man's life like the rest of you did. What does he do? He sacrifices himself. He's up there to study the Word, the Word of God. He goes through it day and night, day and night, has to know every letter of it, every word on the scroll. He has to know it by heart. He, he just something about it that he must know. And then besides that, when your father and mother was married, who joined together as husband and wife? Your godly old priest. Who was it come to your father when he was in need and had owed some money on his farm that the mortgagers was going to take it? Who stood by him? Your kind old priest. Who stood by your mother in the room there when she's given birth to you? Kind old priest. Who comes to you when you're sick and needy? Your kind old priest. Who was it blessed you and committed you to God and circumcised you the eighth day? Your kind old priest. When your father and mother's about to divorce, who brought them back together, held them together? Your kind old priest. When there's trouble in the neighborhood, who takes care of it? Your kind old priest. Certainly. Now, this kind old priest knows that the Bible said that God requires a lamb for a sacrifice. Many of you men are businessmen. So you don't raise sheep, yet God requires a sheep. They made some stalls up there. They sold their sheep so that the, the businessman could go up and buy it. Offering a sacrifice for their soul that God requires. What did this young fellow call Jesus? Where did he come from? said he was born to virgin birth. Who ever heard of such a nonsense thing? We know his mother had him before her and Joseph was born, or her and Joseph was married. He was born. Now, we find out that he's a, he's a bad name to begin with. What membership card does he have? If he was a godly man, what group did he join with? When your priest studied, 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 studied to know that word, here he comes around tearing down what he's built up. Did you call that God? Certainly not. Now, the other day when your priest had made that uh, place up there the, for the, where he could buy the sacrifice, what did this young fellow do? Kindness. He beat, put some ropes together, some flatness and leathers, and looked out upon the people with anger, kicked over those tables and beat them out of there. And you call that fruits of the Spirit? Looking up on them with anger? And look, depriving the man of his opportunity to worship Jehovah. The businessman wants to worship him. He don't raise lambs. And he went there to buy it, and he turned it over and kicked them and run them out. Who has the fruit of the Spirit there? Mm -hmm. See? There you are. See, not fruit of the Spirit, not speaking in tongues, not shouting. You said then, Brother Branham, what is the evidence? What is the evidence? The vindication of the Word in the hour. Yes. They had the Bible. He was exactly what Jehovah said would happen. It don't need any interpretation. It interpreted there. There was your priest. There was all they had and everything else. Just so routine and everything. But yet they failed to see the Word. Amen. That's right. And he made that Word live out to that age. That's the evidence. Amen. Amen. Of that age. Luther had the evidence of his age. Wesley of his age. Pentecost of his age. But we're in another age. Yeah. Those things are good, but it's like the baby's got a finger, eye, nose, but actually he has to become a human being. He has to become 
a, a matured child than be born, have a soul, a body, spirit, and move around. Now we find out that all this Jesus had declared in just a few, just those who he had ordained to life saw him. Not great crowds. His crowds can nothing like be like Caiaphas's crowd. Well, Caiaphas is going to call the whole nation together. Yes. Jesus called us the few together. Not many knew him. Thousands times thousands. When he came on the earth, he went through the earth, and they never even knew he was here. Amen. So will it be again. Yes. He'll come to those who are called to life. Amen. He knows who's called to life. And he'll not, it's his business to take care of that. Now we notice that then they come out of the church and they believed him. Everything the word had been saying about him, there he was. And one day he left their home. I want to speak of three things. Jesus had left, death had come, and all hopes is gone. I want to speak on those three things for a few minutes. Jesus had left, and when he left, trouble come in. Now when he leaves you or your home, where you dwell at, trouble's on its road. Yes. Satan's got an open door when Jesus leaves. He had gone, and, and as soon as he did, then death came in. And when Jesus goes out, death comes in. To be separated from him is death. So death come in when Jesus went out. And death had lingered with Lazarus. And then the one that they believed in and loved, they had sent to him to come pray for Lazarus because it seen him and know that he know God that whatever God Martha expressed it back then whatever thou says to God now God will do it she recognized that he and God was one he was the word of the hour so she recognized that and she knew if she could ever get in contact with him but he was gone and they couldn't get a hold of him and they sent for him and instead of him coming he went on further and then they sent again. And instead of him coming, he went on further. Yeah. Sometimes we wonder why those things happen. But doesn't the scripture say that all things work together for good to them that love God? Amen. Amen. He knows what he's doing. Amen. If he delays, that's all right. He knows what he's doing. It's the purpose. We find out that he said in St. John 5, 19, Verily, verily, I say unto you, the Son can do nothing in himself but what he sees the Father doing. The Father had told him to go away. And to be away so many days after the days was accomplished. Then he said, what he said then, that our friend Lazarus sleepeth. And he said, well, he does good. He said, he's dead. And for your sake, I'm glad I wasn't there. Because they've been trying to get him to go to him to heal him. Or say what had to be done. But he knew what had to be done. Yeah, yeah. So he had done just exactly what he was ordained to do, stay away. If you notice him at the grave when he come back, he expressed that. When he come back and found this home. All hopes was gone. Lazarus had died. Every hour they kept thinking he might come on the scene. He might come on the scene. He might come back. Finally he died. The breath left him. They went out and bombed him, taking the blood from his body, wrapped him in linen, spices, and bombed him and laid him into the grave. Put a rock over the grave, which was their custom of burying in them days, a hole in the ground. It's maybe in the rock, and lay a rock over the top of it. That was their custom. First day passed, second day passed, third day passed, fourth day passed. The man is already rotting in the grave. His nose and probably fell in that. I think that's the first thing it falls in, is the nose. And his already rotten. His, his flesh had gone back to the dust earth. They're going back. His soul was four days' journey somewhere from him. All hopes of ever seeing him again in this life was gone. And then when all hopes is gone, they waited. Maybe if he'll come the first day, second day, no, then he died, he hadn't come. Then desperation set in. After a while, there was somebody must have told her, the master is outside. Here goes Martha down the street. Jesus came in that dark hour when every hope was gone. That's usually when he comes. He comes just at that darkest time. Then Jesus appears on the scene. Now what? He come and call for Martha. His presence brought new hopes. No matter if the boy was dead, yet his presence brings new hope. Yes, you might be sitting here tonight, my friend, where the doctors has give you up with cancer, heart trouble, maybe in a chair, crippled. All science has said there's no hope for you. The deposit of calcium is 
has knotted your, your, your bones that you can't bend them no more, or either your, your heart is so bad the doctor says you might go at any minute. Oh, and great bunch of the people with cancer and TB, maybe the last hope you've got. And it seems like that the doctor has turned you down. Yet to be in the presence and recognition of the presence of Jesus Christ brings hopes again. Somebody can even name it to you. Maybe you've never heard of it before. Well, let somebody say, I know where there is a church. They believe in God. And they pray for the sick. Quickly. Now you're ready to die. See, new hopes spring up. It always does. That dark hour, that's usually when somebody says something about it. Tell you about Jesus. His presence brought new hope. May it do the same thing tonight, like it did last night, when we see that vindicated word beyond any shadow of doubt that's been made manifest and proved that that Jesus that lived 1,900 years ago that died on Calvary, rose up on the third day, and appeared to those disciples and opened their eyes and made this promise of the day is right here tonight in our presence now. It's bound to bring hopes to people. New hopes flash up. Maybe somebody said the church has been kind of dry for a while. We haven't had any good fresh water for, for, uh, for a few months. We haven't had a revival. It looks like everybody's so stagnant. Or something other way, you just go to church and sing a hymn and, and hear a few messages and go back. But all of a sudden, then when we begin to get dry, then Jesus comes on the scene, freshens us up, brings something new to us. He's always there to do that. New hopes comes when... When Jesus comes in, his presence brings new hope. She knew that he was that manifested word of God. She had seen that age. Or she wouldn't just still been orthodox. She still belonged to the church, but she had seen that promised word. She had seen that promised word manifested by him. And she knew that he was that living word. And when she heard about it, she didn't care how many criticized or what else. She took out for him just as hard as she could go. See, she knew he was that manifested word. No doubt but what she'd read of the story of Elijah in his day. Now, he was God's manifested word in that day. He was a prophet. And the word of the Lord comes to the prophet. And there was a woman in there who had a little baby that had been given to her by a blessing that the prophet had blessed her by. And she had the child. One day about 11 o'clock, he must have had a sunstroke. He was out in the field with his father. The Bible doesn't say it was, say it was sunstroke. But he began to cry, my head, my head. About 11 o'clock in the day, and he had a servant. The father did it, take him to the house. He laid on his mother's lap till about noon, got sicker and sicker, and finally died. And now, instead of going in despair, all the neighbors come in screaming and going on, but a steady mother, her baby was dead. She took it up in that little room that she'd provided for the prophet and laid it up on his bed like that. And she said to the servant, Saddle me a mule, and you ride straight, and don't you stop unless I tell you to. Oh, my. That's it. We ain't got time for debating and fussing. This is past that day. Let's go on. We got to get there. We got a need. And so he said, you go forward. Don't you slack your riding unless I command you to. And they went to, they got to Elijah. Elijah being a man of God, not like Christ. Christ knew all things, because he was God. Elijah was a portion of God. That was Christ in Elijah. And that was the message of the hour. For the word of the Lord for that hour was with that prophet. Jesus was the fullness of all those prophets. Every one of them only manifested him. That's all. All the way from Joseph, from 30 pieces of silver. Every word he, he portrayed Christ. So did Moses. David, sitting as a rejected king upon the hill, weeping because he was rejected. 800 years after that, the son of David sat on the hill. That was the spirit of Christ in David there. And he cried, he's both root and offspring of David. And so he stood up on the hill, weeping as a rejected king, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, how could I have heard you as the hymn would have brood. What was it? It was Christ back there. It was Christ crying when David wrote the hymn, My God, why hast thou forsaken me? All my bones, they stare at me. They pierce my feet and my hands. They parted my garments among them. They cast lots for my vesture. That was Christ speaking in David. Amen. He was a manifestation of the word. Christ come to fulfill them things that have been spoken by the prophets because the word was with the prophets. He said that in the lesson last night, that he come to fulfill what the prophets had said about him because they had the word. And Elijah was God's prophet, the word of that day. So the Shunanite woman stayed with that prophet until he come and manifested the power of God and laid himself upon the baby and the baby come to life. 
Now, Martha must have recognized this, although she'd been busy taking care of a house, dishwashing and so forth. But there she showed her color. She showed really what was in her. She went to get him immediately. If God was in Elijah, God had to be in Christ. Because he had proved that he was that person. Amen. How like that, that discrimination. She goes to him. She had to get to him. And she find out there, as she got to him and knew him, now remember, knew that he had never changed, that God never changes his program. If he was in Elijah and could raise the dead, he was in Christ and could raise the dead. No, he had not, because it's the same God. Amen. Neither has he changed yet. Amen. Just as much God denied as he ever was. Amen. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He changes not. And he knew, she knew that it was in him. Watch just in a few minutes to prove it when she said something to him about her brother. And she said, Lord, I, I believe that you are. And he said, I am the resurrection and the life. Amen. Though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Amen. I am. That the I am was in the burning bush with Moses. I am the resurrection. I am the life. I was the one. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. Whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. After this great assurance that she had, that he was the promised word when he said, being a prophet, he could not lie. Therefore, he, when he said, I am the I am, I am he that is the resurrection life. She said, I believe that you are the one, the Son of God, that was to come into the world. Although my brother's dead, laying out there in the grave, he's his body has decaying now, but even now, whatever you say, it'll come to me. All she wanted was to hear him say it. Oh, Martha, where are we tonight? Just speak the word, my servant will live. Just hear him say it. They might have come told her he said it, but here he was himself. Oh, God, open blinded eyes that they might be able to see. When he in his presence speaks the word, Amen. always is manifested. She said, whatever you ask God, God will give it to you. Just let me hear. She wanted to say the word. That's all she wanted to hear. Just get the word. That's all she needed was hear him say he'd do it. And he would have done it right then. But to see by the vision that the father had showed him, he had to be standing by the grave. Oh, my. Hold your faith. God's working everything right. It'll be all right. Just wait till she got to the grave. Notice, she could just get him to say it. Even when he was yet all hopes gone, all everything, he was dead, rotting in the grave, but just hear him say it's all she wanted. Now, when he said, I am the resurrection of life, she believed it. She believed it. Now, notice, now she had to believe for the impossible. When she heard him say, I am the resurrection of life, Though he were dead, yet shall he live, and whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Said, Do you believe this? And she said, Yes, Lord. I believe it. I believe that you are the Son of God that was to come into the world. I like that. I like that. I've said this before. It might stand again now. I was talking to a woman not long ago at a certain church that I mentioned a while ago that doesn't believe that he was God, his deity. He was just a prophet, an ordinary man. He was that, truly. He was that plus God. See, he was the manifestation. Jesus is the body, the boy, the man. God was what dwelt in him. God was in him. He was a God-man. He was a man, yet he was a God manifested in flesh. When we see Jesus, we see God. That's what he said. When you see the Father, see me, you see the Father, because he was a reflection, because he was the Word. Amen. That was in the beginning. Amen. He called the prophets God. Do you know that? He said, you call them God, who the word of God come to you. How do you condemn me when I say I'm the son of God? Because the same word said it would be there. And there's the word made manifest again. And still, they wouldn't believe it. This woman said to me, I can prove. She said, I like to hear you preach, but there's one thing you do too much. So I, what's that? said, you brag too much on Jesus. I said, I hope that's all he has against me. When it, and she said, I said, I hope that's all he can, all he can find in me. I said, if I had 10,000 tongues, I could not speak enough. Oh, my, what are you? She said, but you, you make him God. I said, he was. 
Or if he was, he's the greatest deceiver the world ever had. She said he was a prophet. I said he was a prophet. That's true. A God prophet. Yeah. The fullness of the word. The prophet just had the word come to him. That's what made him a, made him a prophet. But he was the fullness of that word. Amen. And she said, I can prove. She said, you make him divine. I said, he was divine. She said, he can't be divine. I said, but he was. She said, you said you believe the Bible. I said, I do. She said, I'll prove to you by your own Bible that he wasn't divine. I said, do it. The Bible says, so then I believe it, because I believe the word is right. Yeah. She said, on the road from down to Lazarus' grave, you remember that in St. John 11? I said, I certainly do, madam. said, well, now on the road down, he cried. The Bible said he wept. I said, certainly the Bible said he wept. So how could he be divine and weep? I said, he was human. Human and divine? I said, yes, lady, you failed to see. He was a, a man going along there crying with those that were crying. That's right. Grieving with those who grieved. He was a man. But when he straightened his little frail body up and said, Lazarus, come forth. And a man had been dead four days. Stood on his feet. That took more than a man. That was God in the man. Who can raise the dead but God? He is the resurrection and the life. Right. That night out on the sea, when he was out there tired, laying in the back of the boat, worth 10,000 devils swore they'd drown him that night. And that little old boat flopping around like a bottle stopper out there on a stormy sea. And devils thought, we got him now. He's asleep. We'll sink the whole bunch. Oh, he was a man tired. But when once aroused, the spirit put up on the braille and looked up and said, Peace, be still. And the winds and the waves obeyed him. That was the one. He was a man when he was hungry. He'd come down off the mountain and look for a piece of bread or something to eat or a fig off of a tree. But when he took five biscuits and two fishes and fed 5,000, that was God in that man. He was right. Oh, every man that's ever mounted to a hill of beans believe that. All the poets that believe that. No wonder uh, one wrote, Living he loved me and dying he saved me. Buried he carried my sins far away. Rising he justified freely forever. Someday he's coming, oh glorious day. Yeah. Eddie Pruitt, who his songs would not sell, one day it staggered under the impact of the Holy Spirit, grabbed the pen. He wrote the inauguration song when he wrote, All hail the power of Jesus' name. Let angels prostrate fall. Bring forth the royal diadem. Crown him Lord of all. Certainly, that's what we believe he was. Yes, sir, she's got to believe for the impossibles now. To the modern thinking of that day, so do you have to believe for the impossible to see new life, to see something happen. But if he recognized, she recognized him to be the word, then the impossibles can take place because he is a creator and will stand by everything he said. And all things are possible to them that can believe. That's his word. But the impossibles are made manifested when God is tucking his word. Yes, sir. When God's tucking his word, the impossibles are, are made manifest. When God says it'll be, then you take that word and watch what the impossibles happen. It certainly will. But notice, even in all that, she said, even now, Lord, whatever you ask God, God will do it. She knew that she could just get that word to come from him. That's all she needed to do was get that word. Yes, it was her darkest hour. And Jesus come along and called. Oh, what a thing they saw, a resurrection. Let's look at some more where the dark hours come. There was a man one time named Job, one of the oldest prophets in the Bible. He was a great man. He had, he had loved the Lord, and he'd done all he knew how to do, and Satan desired to sift him. So he said to God one day, yeah, God said to him, brother, where have you been? Satan said, oh, walking to and fro and up and down on the earth. He said, have you considered my servant Job? There's none like him in the earth. He's a perfect man. Oh, oh he said, sure, you give him everything, do everything for him. Certainly, he's a great man. But let me have him one time. I'll change the tune. I'll make him curse you to your face. He said, you can't do it. That's his confidence in a believer. Wow! He's infinite. He's eternal. He knows the end from the beginning. He knows Satan couldn't do it, for he is the word. He knew what Job would do. I remember Job, he broke him out in boils, killed his children, took everything he's had. His health was gone. Even his comforters came, and they couldn't do nothing but just accuse him of being a secret sinner. And old Job got in such a place until he got so distressed. You have to get in distress first. You have to get to a time where you're at the end of the room. Job got into the end of the room when he said, Cursed be the day that I was born. May the sun not even shine. And may the moon not shine by the night. May the name never be called. And in that distress, 
Then Jesus came along. He looked down and said, I see a mare flower die. It rises again in the spring. If a tree blows down, it comes up again through the scent of water. He's seen all botany life living again. But he said, a man lay it down. He give us up the ghost. Where is he? He knowed he was an old man. He said, his sons come to mourn over him and he perceive it not. Oh, that thou would hide me in the grave and keep me in the secret place that I wrath be past. Point me a time. And set me a time, we went you know, going on like that talking. He is at the end of his distress. What would happen? The leaves live, uh, come back in the trees, the flowers come back again, everything else come up, but a man lives down, he giveth up the ghost. He was in distress. He didn't know what could happen to him. And him at that age, when he did, then Jesus came along. God poured his head towards the sky and he saw Jesus coming in the last day. Amen. That darkest of hours, when his wife said, Curse God and die the death. Yet, he said, Woman, thou speakest like a foolish woman. The Lord gave and the Lord taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Even his wife turned him down. His church turned him down. Everybody turned him down. In that dark hour where he didn't know where he was going from there, Jesus came along. Then he screamed out, I know my Redeemer liveth. And at the last days, he'll stand up on the earth and know that the skin worm destroys this body. Yet in my flesh shall I see God whom I shall see. In his darkest hour, then Jesus come along. Yes, sir, Moses. For Moses, the darkest hour come for him in Israel. He was right in the line of duty. Met God up there in the bush and said, I am the I am. He went down and fought through all kind of impersonations of Jambres and Jambres, trying to impersonate his work. All this, he stood true to God. He finally got Israel to believe, and here he comes out of Egypt, going up to the, to the promised land where God said, you worship me on this mountain. That was the word of God. Moses knew he had to go to that mountain. Amen. Hey. Yes. God said so. Yes. No Pharaoh can kill him. Amen. No devil can kill him. Right. Nothing can kill him. He's coming to that mountain. Amen. Amen. I feel religious. Yeah. <laughs> He's going to that mountain shore. We are a road to glory. Nothing's going to stop him. No. God's going to vindicate his word. I don't care what takes place. He's going to do it anyhow. Yeah. Yes. On his road, right in the path of duty. Here he is hemmed in between the mountains. He listens and he hears a roar behind him. What is it? Pharaoh's chariots for the thousands. Coming armored and spears and things to ride them down and tramp them down. There's a Red Sea had him cut off. What did he do? He got into, he got into stress. The people all screaming, oh, we're in for it now. Pharaoh will kill us. The stores will be run through us. Our babies will die here in the wilderness. Moses cried out, oh, God. And then Jesus came on the scene. Amen. He was a pillar of fire. That's right. He come down and he hung between him and the danger. Hey, man, he's our go-between. He's a stand There he stood, standing there, darkness to the Egyptians, those who were coming to try to do something about it. He was light to them to walk by. And in the morning when the wind started blowing real hard that night, then what did he do? He had come in the form of the pillar of fire. Remember, he's still that pillar of fire. Yes, sir, when he was on earth, he said, I come from God and I go to God. And after his death, burial, resurrection, and ascension, St. Paul, on his road down to Damascus, he was struck down by that pillar of fire. Yes. Remember, he was a Hebrew. He would have not said this. He said, Lord, who are you? Capital L-O-R-D, Elohim. Who are you, the person? He said, I'm Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. He's the first and the last. He says, A little while in the world, see me more yet you'll see me. I'll be with you, even in you. The same pillar of fire, the same God, doing the same thing with the same promise. Amen. Amen. Making his word manifested. I am the resurrection life. I am he that was. He that is and he that shall come. Yes, sir. Your fathers eat men in the waters. He said they're everyone dead. But I am that I am. <laughs> Moses in the burning bush. That was the I am. He's still the I am. Not I was, I am. Present tense all the time. We find out here that Moses is backed out into this corner. And the... Uh, Christ had come down. Now the Bible said that, that Moses esteemed the, the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures of Egypt. The reproach of Christ. Christ was the anointing, the Logos that went out of God. The angel, any Bible reader knows that that angel was Christ. Amen. And there he was in the wilderness and he came on the scene Amen. in the form that he was supposed to be manifested in. Yes. Glory to God. Amen. He comes to pay in the form the same Christ manifested in him. He 
told him he'd take him out. He was doing it. There he come to stand by his words to vindicate it. Then after he'd done come like he did to Martha, then he called. He said, Moses, why are you crying to me? Speak to this people that you go far. That dark hour, the Red Sea opened up and they went across Amen. on their journey to fulfill the word of God. Yes, at Moses' darkest hour, then Jesus come along. We got time now and he called Moses. We want to we'll draw your attention to another little man. His name is Jeremiah. There's so many of them in the world today. He was a secret believer. He loved Jesus. He'd heard about him. He believed him. But you see, he had already joined himself to an organization. <laughs> He, he, he just, he couldn't come out and confess it. He believed it, but he couldn't confess it. So he had done jarred up with the unbelievers. But he really believed the show, but a man gets in that shape, sometimes God brings him to this showdown. <laughs> it's in distress when we really show our colors, what we really are. So there was, he's already jarred up to the unbelievers that he done went over and put his name on the book and so forth, and he was a priest. And so he, he just couldn't hardly make a confession because that was his meal ticket. So, but he still believed Jesus. One day his little girl got sick. Oh my, no doubt, a man like that would call the doctor. Physician come, attended to the child. Her fever got worse and worse. After a while she got so hot and everything, she finally got at the point of death. He was in distress. He had to do something. He, he just didn't know what to do. Now, he thought if I could only find him wherever he is. Now, he never waited until it got nighttime. Like Nicodemus did to have a private interview. Time was for action. The time had come for action, and he must act then. Amen. I think, brother, sister, the same is now. The time has come for action. Amen. The time has come to believe or don't believe. Amen. That separating line comes to every man and woman. It comes to every child. Sometimes when you pass that line, there's only one thing left. That's judgment. When you pass between mercy and judgment, when you pass that line, remember he got in distress. He didn't know what to do. There stood his priests, all the rabbis standing around him. The fellowship was with him. All around there watched his little girl die. The doctor standing on the outside with his hands full and shaking his hands. I'll give every medicine that I know. And still, see, it was Jesus who working all the time. Jesus is doing this for a purpose to bring the color out of that little fellow. That's why I see him go get his little black hat and pull it on, put his little priest coat on. Where are you going? I'm going to hurry down the river. I'm going after him. <laughs> oh, my. Where he went in the hour of distress. He had to make a decision. Yeah. Let his child die, or he know that was the manifestation of the word. He was a priest, and he had read the word, and he knew that that was God's manifestation. God was in Christ, reconciling the world to Himself. He knew that, and he was forced to the issue. He had to make a mistake. Let his child die, or make his confession. When he got in that distress, it was about that time that Jesus came along. He went to see him. He said. He said, I'll go with you, whatever you say. And on the road, here come a runner, the dark thing there, and made his confession. And he believed him. He'd done excommunicated himself then, put himself in public eyes then, that he was a believer on Jesus. And here come a runner, said, don't bother nobody, because your girl's already died. She died yesterday. She's already dead. Don't, don't fool with it no more. And it was a little hard like to fail, but he looked and seen those eyes of Jesus and said, did not say to you? <laughs> don't fear if you want to see the glory of God. Amen. He's already said he would come. He's already said he'd do this, and here he is doing it. Amen. 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 He said he would rise on the scene in the last days and do these things as he did, as we read last night and talked. Here he is doing it. What are you scared about? Remember, when he came and he called her from the dead. He came on the scene and called her from the dead. Old blind Barnabas one time hit his darkest hour. Jesus was down there organizing the full gospel business, man. Breakfast down there in, in uh, Jericho. And he had Zacchaeus down there. He met him in a tree down the street. So when he was, I mean, he wouldn't organize anything else, I'm sure. See? So then when he come down there, he, he had him, Zacchaeus, he went with him. Old blind Barnabas had been blind since his little boy. So he thought Jesus might come out that gate. And he was waiting. After a while, he heard a lot of noise and everybody coming by. And he heard priests say, Hey! Hey, you! You going up the hill there? Do, 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 we hear that you raise the dead. We got a whole graveyard full of them up here. If you be the Messiah, if you be the Messiah, come up here and raise these dead. You know that same devil still is? Yeah. In the form of religion, the same way. Yeah. If you be the Messiah, we, you raise the dead. We got a graveyard full of them up here. 
come. No, oh, everybody screaming one horn, Hosanna to the prophet, another horn, this, that, the other. Such a confusion. This old blind man thought, oh, I missed him. He come out down there and I thought he'd come here. I've been put in the wrong place. And he got to scream. He thought if he is the word, he's God. He's got to be. So, oh, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. In that hour of distress, he called out. Now, Jesus, if you'll mark him, here was the Jericho, where they said he was sitting, he was 150 yards from where Jesus was with thousands of people rushing around him. He couldn't have heard that man's cry. No, but he felt it. Amen. He stopped. Amen. I want to preach one of these nights, and then Jesus stopped. <laughs> oh, and then Jesus stooped. Oh, but when Jesus stopped, what was it? He called him. The Master has come. Don't be where he said the disciples, he called thee. He's calling you, calling out from that crowd. He does the same thing now. Does it soak in? The master has come and called for you. And he called him from blindness to life. And he calls for you. And when he called him, he gave him back his sight. The little woman with the blood issue one time up on the hill had spent all of her money with the doctors. She no doubt that sold the, the team, that sold the, uh, the farm, had it mortgaged, that spent all they could with the physician. None of them done her any good. She constantly got worse and worse. The blood wouldn't stop. Constantly on and on it went. She got deeper and deeper. And one day, while sitting there knitting up on the hill from where she lived, she looked down into the valley and she seen a boat come in. Everybody began to run Hosanna to the prophet. She had heard about him. Faith comes by hearing. Now she said, I'll go down and get a look at him. And when she walked down there, she first got a sight of the word of God manifested in flesh. There's something about his talk and his look that she knows that was him. Yes, yes sir. Oh, if I could only attract his attention in some way, if I could only touch him in some manner. And she slipped through the crowd and she touched his garment. Now, I remember it wasn't her finger that he fell. No, sir, because the Palestinian garment hangs loose. And he, they, Peter said, everybody touched. He said, but this is a different touch. I perceive that I have gotten weak. Jesus had come. Her money was gone. Everything was gone. But in that dark hour when the blood wouldn't stop and the doctors couldn't stop it, Jesus coming, what did he do? He called. Amen. Looked around until they found her. And he said, you had a blood issue, but it stopped. Amen. He's the same. That's the same forever. Amen. Master has come. And he calls for you. He's come and he called. He called her back to health. The little woman at the well that we spoke of last night. All hopes is gone. Perhaps maybe her fifth husband had left her, and she just took the sixth one that night, and she, uh, she was a little doubt about him. Morally, she was gone. She wanted to be a real lady. She, no doubt she had been reading the Bible. And she was uh, uh, going along there, going up about 11 o'clock. She couldn't come early in the morning when the righteous women come. And they packed their water up on their head and the jugs and went back down. So she couldn't come mix with them. They, they had a segregation of that and that. They had a right and wrong just mixed together. The immoral stayed in their place. So she couldn't come with the rest of them. They wouldn't let her come. So after everybody got their waters and went back, she come for better. And then she come up there with this pot on her head. No doubt she's going along thinking, now the man that I married uh, got a hold of last night, I'm doubting him. He's a man. He acts so funny. I, I just don't know about him. I haven't got a chance. I'm ousted from society. And I can't go to those churches. They don't. You just look at him. I don't know what to do. I'm in distress. And I've been reading the Bible. Surely someday that prophet will come on the scene. I know they claim that there is no such a thing and this is so maybe a hundred years off and a thousand years off. We've been looking for it for thousands of years and it's never happened yet. So we ain't looking for it now. Everything's so, oh no, we got churches and things. We don't need nothing like that now. So it's just all I'm thinking, you know, when you think about him, that's when he appears to you. Like we had last night when he was on the road to him. When she thought all those things, she heard a man say, bring me a drink. What about in her darkest of hours when her morals is gone? Maybe a pretty little lady been turned on the street to live at. Sometimes it's not the little girl's fault, it's her parents' fault. They let her get out like that. And there she was, maybe her little curls all hanging down. She was depleted, going along, weary, and nobody had anything to do with her. The child, maybe a big story behind it. Anyhow, I know one thing, she had read the Bible and she believed the Bible. And there was a little seed laying down in her heart that says, if it ever happens, I'll know it. She was predestinated to that. 
Look at that old Judas standing there and acting like what he did. His black down the bottom of his heart. The light was shining up here in his works. But down in his heart, he didn't believe it. And here she was. See, the light couldn't get down to that. But here she was believed. She believed it, but her life was blacked out. When the light struck, it took the blackness out. Amen. But when the light struck up here, it blacked it all over. <laughs> That's the difference. See, she was born for that purpose. She, she said when he told her how many husbands she had, she, what happened? She got all at once excited like she got in distress she said sir i perceive that you are a prophet i know that when the messiah cometh he'll do these things then he called her then he called her i'm he he just speaks with him she recognized it by the word of god he called her from her sin to a life that her name is in the Bible and she's got immortal life today. He can call you the same way because he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. So, yeah, her morals was gone, but still she knew that he had that discernment. She knew that that had to be the Messiah. Then uh, when Jesus said, I am he, I am he, she knew that was. One time the disciples was out on the boat, all hopes is gone, the storms had went away without Jesus, and the storms are just it's like it was at Lazarus' house. All hopes is gone, the little old boat had waterlogged, and they were screaming and crying, maybe praying and going on, and the lightning of flashing, and the boat filled up with water, the mast poles dropped down, the oars broke, and they were holding one another crying, and in that real darkest of hour, then Jesus come walking along. But he looked like a shadow to them. He looked scary, like a spirit. And they cried out with fear. That's what's the matter today. Jesus comes in an hour, your dark hour, and you're afraid of it. Yes, you right. don't know what it is. Right. They didn't know what he was. They said, oh, it's a spirit. They're screaming. And then he called and said, fear not, it is I. Yes. In the darkest of hours, Jesus come along to help. That's what he always does, comes in the darkest of hours. Then Jesus came and manifested himself and come to them. Peter said, if it be you, bid me come on water. Jesus said, come on. You know what, friends? Soon he will come for those in this last days. Now, isn't it strange that the church has got in this dark hour again? Now, I'm going to say something here. Uh, it's not a doctrine. I'm just prophesying. You know what's happened? It's going to come to a place soon, mark my word, that all denominations are going to have to join the ecumenical council. If they don't, they can't have the support of the council. Therefore, there will be a boycott and nobody can go to these churches or go to any churches unless you have a mark from your own church you cannot buy or sell. You see it just as it was, so it's going to be again a mark unto the beast. And the church are realizing that spiritual people and you Pentecostal people anyhow are recognizing it. You begin to feel it. When your church is many of the organizations of the Pentecost, and I don't have to call your name, but you know right now they're, they're coming into it. They've done witness that they were. And when you do that, what are you going to have to do? You're going to have to forfeit your evangelical teaching of the baptism of the Holy Ghost. You're going to have to forfeit your doctrine of the Bible. And the members is not going to stand for it. Amen. Real born-again Christians will die first. Amen. They're born by the Word. They know this thing's coming. Yes, sir. And isn't it strange that right this dark as of ours, then Jesus comes along and calls us to, don't get scared, it's me, I'm still with you, I'm here to manifest my word. As he was then, so is he now. He said he would do that. Oh, my, the Master has come and has called for us. Many sick people here, no doubt, that are sitting here and the doctor has told you there's no, no hope for you. You may be in your darkest of hour, but remember, the Master has come and called for you. And someday, someday, the Master is going to come and call for every name that's wrote on the Lamb's Book of Life. If yours are not there, get it on there now, for he's going to come and call even those that are in the grave shall hear his voice and come forth to life. The Master will come and call for you. And while he's calling today, answer and make preparations for that day is my advice to you. The promise of this age, he promised he would be here. The things that he did, he would do again. And now, again, the Master has come and calls for you. Let us bow our heads. I've got about six more pages here, but I can't get through that now. Let's bow our heads. I promise to let you out early and already quarter after.
Heavenly Father, oh Lord, let it happen again. All these things that I have said, Jesus has come and calls for thee. What does he do when he comes? He calls. And let it happen again, Lord. Let thy Holy Spirit come among the people tonight. The Lord Jesus in the form of, of the Spirit. Let him come tonight and reveal himself. And then manifest himself like those people, how they believe. We will believe also, Lord. There's many here, maybe it's never had this opportunity. We pray that you'll grant it to them again tonight. Or we ask this for the glory of God. In Jesus' name, amen. That's your sister. Just go ahead with that. That's fine. Go right ahead. Oh, you're quiet, everybody. Do you believe that he has come? He has. Does he still call when he comes? Now, if you just only believe, if you just believe the word of God, God will bring it. Now, look, I haven't got time to call a prayer right up here. I'm going to call tonight out there, if the Lord willing. The Master has come. He's come to fulfill his word in the last day. And what he was then, he is today. What his manifestation or identification was then, it is today because he's still the word of God. Do you believe that? And the word of God is the deserter of the thoughts and intents of the heart, the way he did then, the way he's always did. He is still the same. If he would do that just now, would you believe him? Would it make you believe him? You people out there now, let me look first and see if there's anybody that I know sitting anywhere in here that I know. All that's around up in here that don't know me, raise up your hand. You know what? I don't know nothing about you. You're sick. Raise up your hand. I guess everybody. All right? Now, you believe. You just believe with all your heart. Who now have faith? Believe God. I'm going to ask you to be real quiet. Be seated. Don't stir around. Please, please. See, you are a uh, soul, body, and spirit. Your spirit and the Holy Spirit is real timid. How many remembers many years ago that the Holy Spirit, when I come by here, told you, when I take the people by the hand, he told me this discernment would come and then go on. You remember? Remember that? But he said, if you can get the people to believe you. You remember that day many years ago? You got to believe. I see a man. I believe it was down here at the other meeting. Sitting right there and the Holy Spirit had been watching when I was preaching. He was a crippled man. He had crutches under his arm. And just when I started to make the call, Satan come to the man of black shadow and I watched it with my own eyes. He got up and walked out. He'll always be crippled. See? And so he where he'd been healed right there. He just, just, see. But just, I don't know why. I guess he just listened to the enemy. But if you can stand and watch those shadows, See those things in forms the way they are and watch them how they do. See? It would be. Now, I cannot heal. The man that tells you he can heal you, he's wrong. You're already healed. Yeah. But it's recognizing the presence of Jesus Christ. Now, if Martha knew that if she could see him again, that she'd get her desire because he was the manifested word. Can't we believe that much tonight to believe yeah. it? Sure, sure we ought to. He has come. He's come. He's come in the form of the Holy Ghost. That's who he is. Now you just pray. See up here, if I had somebody standing here right here by me, you just, just pray. You see so many people praying. It's all over the building. You just have to watch. You can't say, say Brother Brad, no, sir, I, I couldn't do it. No more you can dream me a dream. See, you might dream. You, I could have had you dream a dream of me. You believe that. But you can't do it yourself. You can't say, Brother Ram, I'm going to dream a dream of you now. No, you can't do that. Neither can I see a vision. Ever who gives a dream to you, that's one who has to do it. The same way it is my vision is. See a man sitting right here at the end of the road with arthritis. If you believe with all of his heart, God will heal him with the arthritis. You believe he'll do it, sir? Sitting out there with the Mexican man sitting at the end of the road. Would you believe it? All right. The lady sitting next to you, she also has arthritis, too. You believe God will heal you, lady? Is this got a rebound to it? I'm afraid the people don't hear it. You will? 
All right? How about the other little Mexican lady studying by her? She suffers with a stomach trouble. You believe God will heal your stomach, please? She got it. When I see that light go down, that means it happened. <laughs> yeah. uh, that's it. It struck her. There it was swirling right around. That does. When he can find faith, the many things he could not do because of their unbelief. Here's a lady sitting here praying right here. She's scared. She should be. She's got a cancerous condition. Real bad. I don't know you. But God knows you. Do you believe that God can tell me about this cancer or something or other? Look at me. There's so many of their friends. This one I'm standing for. Look at them. Now, yes, you're not from here. This is not your home. You're from a place called Porterville. California. You believe God can tell me who you are? You know, your name is Mrs. Winton. That's right. Now believe the cancer only. If thou canst believe. That's all God has to do. If thou canst believe. Can't you believe that with all your heart? Somebody in this section in here, can't you believe? The Master has come and called for you. He's calling you from death to life, from sickness to hell. Here's a man sitting right back here, head down praying. He's really not praying for himself, he's praying about somebody else. It's a, a girl, it's his daughter. You believe, sir? You got trouble with your legs, you got trouble with your knee. That's right, no need of weeping, that's him that by you. Your daughter's in a hospital, isn't she? Two birthers case. You believe? You believe the Master has come and called for her? Will you believe this one, Father? You will? May he visit her tonight and you may be over. Here's a little boy, a little brown-faced boy. He's suffering with a skin disease. An asthma. Little Mexican boy. Mexican boy. See. He isn't from here. He's from San Jose. You believe, son? Another thing, your father's here with you. He's a minister. That is right. You believe God can tell me what your name is? Will you make you believe? Real strong? Your name is Reuben. Now I believe. Praise the Lord. <laughs> The Master has come, and He calls for you. Oh, sinner. Oh, sick person. Don't you see the Master manifested in the human being between believers? He's come to call His believing children to hell. He's come to call the sinner to repentance. Backslider, church member, the Master has come and calls for you. Do you believe it? Do you believe it for your need right now? If you do, raise up your hand and say, I believe for my need. Then raise up on your feet now and accept it. The Master has come and calls for thee. Hey, whoever you are, whatever need you have for, the Master has come and he calls for you. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. That little woman went into the city and said, Come see a man who told me what was wrong. You didn't go into the city. You come and see it yourself. So the Master has come and calls for thee. Raise up your hands and raise it and say, Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner. Forgive me. I'm a backslider. Take me back, Lord. I need the Holy Ghost. Heal me. I'm sick. Heal me. I'm crippled. Make me well. The Master has come and calls for thee. Raise up your hands now and give him praise. Amen. Give us the Lord. Lord, here. I will praise you. I will praise you. You know, I... You believe? I will praise Him. I will praise Him. Oh, praise the Lamb for sinners slain. Oh, give Him glory, all ye
don't you love to sing to him while he's here? He's the spirit moving around to the building. He knows your heart. He knows all about you. Let's sing it to him with all of our heart. I will praise him. Raise your hands when you do it. I, I just praise him. Praise him.
has come and he calls for you. He's calling you. You say, how do I know? He's using my voice. Yeah. If he uses my voice to tell sickness, afflictions, and things, don't you know he's calling also for sin? Come out. Yeah. Come now. This may be the last opportunity you'll ever have. Once more, this more you ought to come, friend. I don't want to embarrass you to call you out like this. That's not fine. You sometimes maybe the Pharisees thought they were saved, but they wasn't. You're thinking the same thing. Come now, be sure. Don't, don't just take a halfway chance on it. If there's a little doubt of your mind, don't take no chance. Come on now, now's the time. Now, while the fountain's open, while the Holy Spirit is here, the Master has come. That little doubt is what He's trying to tell you. You're doubting. Give it over. Come on now. The Master has come and calls for you. That's right. He's came on. 